I am a very proud American citizen. <laughs> I was born in Hungary. I am from Budapest. As I'm standing here now and looking at you, if I close my eyes or I open, what do I see? I am marching in a highway in Germany. We, I have Nazi soldiers around me. They are in civilian clothes. That gave us some idea. These people change uniform because they know that the liberators are coming closer. And this gave us energy. Will he shots? You will see fire. I have to leave now, but I will come back. The good man left. We didn't sleep, of course. We heard the shots. We did see the fire. And next day he came back. I will never, ever forget him. He was standing in front of us. And what did he say? You are all free. This part of Germany surrendered. Here we standing 12 young girls. We were ugly. Who was standing in front of us? A young, very good looking <laughs> American soldier. What should we do? He said, we are free. All 12 of us jumped him. <laughs> they jumped him and kissed him and cried and laughing. And that dear man was laughing and crying with us. And then he said, don't suffocate me. You still need me. And then he took us in a barrack. They took our names. He took us in other barrack where was real food. And the good American doctor said, don't eat too much too soon. They could more for a year. You didn't have any food in you. You can die if you eat too much. It was not easy, but if you try to learn to eat. And when this dear man said that you are free, I was thinking, I want to go. I don't know how, which way. I want to go to America to them the American people for they died and they fought for my freedom. I would not be here if not this dear, dear people, your grandma, grand, uncle, I don't know who, but many of you in American soldiers were fighting and they were making sure that some people survived. And we are, I decided I would like to come to this country and thank the American people that they did that for us. That was not easy. It took many, many things. Now we don't have more time, but I made it and I came to America with my family. I have to share with you an other story. I was in Auschwitz-Birkenau. I was a prisoner. 
But then I was in Germany, in Buchenwald. Here, they told us, for 25 of us, that you are here to make Baham. Us to make Bahams? Yes. They took us in, in a huge room, but long tables on it, trays in it, bars, colored bars, but they had hole in it, and next to it was a same colored vial. The engineer said that these bars are poisonous chemicals. If we drop one, will be explored, everybody will die. Twenty-five of us we looked at each other and we said, thought, let's drop one. But then we decided, mm -mm, that's not good because the Nazis will die, but we will too. We wanted to be alive. We realized that in the next room they were Nazi soldiers with the gun. We were in the other room. We had something that they didn't have. We spoke Hungarian. One of us said, you know what? Let's make a little sabotage. <gasps> Good idea. What do we do? Oh boy, we made such a mess. We took the green one with the red wire, the brown one with the yellow wire, and we made such a wonderful mess. We were so happy that finally we were doing something against the terrible power. And we were laughing. And we were surprised that the SS guards didn't come in to check us. Do you know why not? Excuse me, those dumb Nazis, when they heard us laughing, they thought that we are happy to work for them. They didn't want to disturb us. Boy, for seven months, we were doing, and then they took these messy things, they put it in the airplane, and the plane went away to do what? To kill those people whom we prayed to liberate us, the Americans. We were so, so, so upset about them. But we didn't know we kept on doing messing up the box. I was already in Bellingham and I spoke in the central library. In the first row was not so young anymore, kind of middle-aged men. And then I said, but I still don't know if it is a good job. He said, but I do. I said, sir, what do you know? He said, I was in Germany for six months. We were going to war Berlin. Hitler was still alive. The Nazis were bombing us day and night. But to our surprise, came a bomb. They didn't explode. <laughs> <laughs> He looked at me, do you know now that you do a good job? I said, yes, sir. I hope that somehow I made, because I made a lot of boo-boo in that. <laughs> and then we were called veterans that maybe we saved 
song on the man of Caroline. Later on, if you want to, I can tell more stories, but now one more comment. People are asking me if I have hate in me. It was horrible things happened to me. I lost my whole family. And then when I asked him, you do you have hate? They were not surprised. I say a big no. Because if I would have hate in my heart, I would not be free. I would be a prisoner of my own hate. This doesn't work with me anymore. I am free, and as a free person, what do I do instead of hate? What I'm doing now and almost every day, when I tell people that what I learned in Auschwitz and Buchenwald, that life is precious, <coughs> life is wonderful. Yes. I can stay loud and clean. I love life. And we have to help each other not to hate, to help, to just share things with people, helping them if they need just a little smile and one more over again to be sure to know what freedom is. I know in 4th of July, Thanksgiving, I am giving thanks that I live in freedom. I am an American and I am able to raise my family here. Thank you for free in me and thank you for listening.